could do one thing managing Chris Eubank's career again, what would it be? I would have tried to make sure that mentally he coped better with Steve Collins. Steve Collins completely screwed his head up. Steve Collins, mm. let's move on. Mm -hmm. He seemed to have I don't played you at your own game. Uh, yes. Yeah, Steve was very good. I mean, listen to this story here. I go to Dublin to have this press conference with him. I go to, I go to Dublin. I'm the champion of the world. I go to Dublin to have the press conference in his backyard. He turns up an hour and a half late. That's okay. It's just a trick. It's not just... bothered you so far? No, of course not. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you do. You're, you are who you are and I am who I am. Okay. He then speaks in Gaelic for the next half an hour. <laughs> Still, you're just Steve and I'm me and doesn't matter. When a referee says box, you know, it only can be one way. This is my view. Then he starts speaking in English. He says, you know, Mr. Eubank, we all admire you. He says, uh, you know, the quintessential Englishman. You dress well, you're dignified, you're well behaved, you're good at what you do. You seem to have a humility that people don't give you credit for. So he's, he's, Massage butter your ego. He's, he's buttering me up. <laughs> and I'm saying, you know what, whatever you say, you're still just Steve. Then he said to me, I'm an Irishman. I do for the Irish people. I support the Irish people. You are not really an Englishman. You're an African. What do you do for the Africans? You see your face? That's right. I lost a fight at that moment. Then? At that moment. See, the fight was just uh, a formality. I lost the fight at that moment. Because he got inside you. Because, because, yeah, there's, there's so many things for me to, to answer that I can't speak to a, a tabloid media about. Okay. Because of so many people to weigh in, we had the public weigh in. But we decided to make the official weigh in up in the offices up here. This is when all began the hypnotists and the mind games. I was a little over the weight, so I, I got my skipping rope because I was conscious of the ceiling, right? And I was trying to skip like the last pound off. And as I came in, I saw Chris Eubank came in there and stood at the door and looked in. And he made a comment, something like how unprofessional it was of me. Not to be, on, not, not to be, you know, to, to be overweight, yeah. And when I saw that and he came closer, I just put the rope down and I walked right up to him and I went right up to his face. And I just gave him this, the look, and the man, I said this mantra, like I'm gonna win, I'm gonna win. People started to look around. <laughs> What's going on here? I've been hypnotised. The issue has been raised that sometimes the mind tells the body when to stop uh -huh. and people are worried that he may go on through the pain threshold and it could cause Steve some damage and yeah. people are worried about yeah, that. Yeah. Well, I think in, in something like boxing, the mind plays a big part in it. I mean, a lot of people in situations where they're very excited may actually feel no pain anyway. Many boxers, I don't think, feel pain till afterwards. Now, it's true he will feel less pain than he normally would. I mean, that is definitely true. He'll also find that he's able to move much easier. For instance, one of the things we do is that I've slowed down. So when he sees the punches coming at him, they look about three times slower than normal. And we've done this in the training sessions, and it's worked very well. We've also made the target three times bigger. So it's much easier for him to be aware of what's happening. But of course, I've told him at the same time, and this is instilled in him, that he would be very aware of all dangers. In fact, he'd be much more aware than normal of any danger that may be to him. I said, um, you know, and I'm going to win, and you know, he's going to punch me, I won't feel pain, I'm going to be fit, I'm going to be strong. And he wanted out that day and the morning, didn't he? The morning of the fight Absolutely, as well. Yeah. That's why um, I wanted to call the fight off. That's why I would call the fight off if I could now, because I'm going into unknown territory. The 43 fights I've had in the past, I've always known what I was dealing with. I don't know what I'm dealing with tonight. I'm fighting someone who is mechanically uh, orientated, and that is just an unknown area. It's not fair that I should be put into a situation. So for once, Chris Eubank, although you're always a little bit sort of reverent of your opponent and a little bit fearsome, there is a little bit of genuine fear, I sense. There's always genuine fear, but this, this is the type of fear I don't understand. Normal fear, uh, I understand getting into a ring with a man who is trained to be uh, the best he can be. Um, but under hypnosis, basically, he will be more mentally. I mean, and 
If you talk to anyone in the business, you, you'll get to understand that it's 85% mental, because it's only endurance. You know, how, uh, how, how far will I go? What am I prepared to put up with? How much punishment am I prepared to put up with? Now, if, you, if, if mentally you are uh, in a trance, or every time you should stop, you're gonna keep on going, what's gonna, what's gonna happen? There has to be a line drawn here. And, and this is why I'm, I'm taking up with the Board of Control and the PBA. This, this is wrong. But in your own mind, you're 100%, everything's been fine. Oh, yeah. We'd expect 100% sure. from Christopher. Of course, yeah, you'll get 100% from me. But you'll get more so now, because, you know, you know, a very specific provocation has been given. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm in that corner. If I walk away from the fight now, they say, well, you're a coward. Or they say that, you know, you, you, you have no more credibility. I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't be in that ring tonight. This is wrong. This is unfair. That's legal cheating. It's not right. I've rarely seen a fighter with the kind of manic intensity that Steve Collins brings to this contest. The big entrance is what Chris Eubank was great for. We love that. We all love that. When he enters that ring, it's all about him. And it's going to undermine me. I've got to take the entrance away, put on my earphones, put the hood up, and I switch on the rocking music. Obviously, over my own earphones, I could hear simply the best music. I and mean, this is his entrance. And I heard it, the boom, the explosions going off. And I said, right, you know, I'm probably imagining this is him that was coming. And then I felt the ropes move. And I said, right, that's him. And then obviously, I felt the spring. And then the thump on the canvas, because I'm sitting down at this, the shuffling of the canvas, and he's in the ring now. I said, just keep it up, just keep it up. It wasn't a game, it was real. I really believed this was my moment. The magic was working. What next from the Christopher Livingston Eubank School of Outrageous Entrances? The psychological battle here is incredible. Collins did not even hear his own ring introduction. Now that's the hypnotist, Dr. Tony Quinn, disrobing him there. He's taking off the headphones. Now he says that all this hypnotism is going to make him punch harder. He says he's going to change his footwork. I must say, I thought Steve Collins was a pretty good fighter without all of that. Due to go 12 rounds, of course. Collins, it's reckoned he'd be best as the cagey counter-puncher. But straight away, he wades in with the left hook. Something of a chess match in there, because both of them are happier counter-punching. Good right uppercut inside from Eubank. And just listen to the roars from the Irish crowd when Collins comes forward like that. Well, it is Tony Quinn, the hypnotist, who's talking in there. That, now, the, the textbooks say there should be one man giving the instructions in there, otherwise the fighter can get confused. He's getting through with good shots, and you went calling him in. Collins looking to tee off with the right hand. you just looking a shade disorganised there for a moment. Gets through again, he's fast. Very good shot, say. He did seem to hurt Eubank a little bit there with them punches. It's lunging a bit. And Eubank goes onto the floor. And he's down. Body punch. Only the fourth time in his career. Crucial breakthrough in the right hand. Crashes through as well. Eubank's in trouble here. Well, Collins said he had the extra punch power. And Eubank comes back in terrific style. And what a round this is. Look at Eubank. The right hand's got Collins. The right hand's got Collins. Mandatory eight count and another twist in the plot. He's OK, I think. And look at this. Guts, he comes back. And Eubank really does want to have a tear up with him now 
sensing that he may be behind, and he all knows a butt in there as well from Eubank, as well as the right hand. Some finish. They both hold up their hands aloft. Who's got that? We shall see. And the new. Collins has won it. the first defeat ever on Chris Eubank. How much uh, was an influence with your hypnotist? There was a lot made of that before the fight. How big a factor was that? We fooled the world. <laughs> Tony Quinn is a good friend of mine. I was out in Vegas on my own due to manage not managerial problems, but my training was caught up with uh, hair behind. I had to go to Vegas on my own. I needed company. The pressure was on. I brought Tony Quinn with me. He put my mind at ease. Helped me out while I was there alone and confirmed what I always knew that I would win the world title. A, a very rude awakening when, when I, um, you know, when in the first round I think he threw a, a jab and he hit me right in the face and I was oh my god, this guy hurts, you know, this, actually I do feel pain. <laughs> I felt that, wasn't it? Where's the hypnotism? <laughs> that hurts, you know.